I mentioned in my previous video that I once was put under a general anesthetic to have five teeth extracted and that the process seemed to take place instantaneously with no conception or perception apparently of any passage of time whatsoever. Now that's an interesting experience and it tends to lead you to conclude that you had no sense of the passage of time that you had no consciousness, no nothing. But that too can be deceptive, and that could be an imposition of a memory-based type of consciousness um, that may bear no relationship to something that is not mem memory-based. In other words, the fundamental uh, conscious experience. Um, apparently, um, my knowledge of passage of time, my uh, experience of anything, my experience of even self-awareness of existence itself was gone when I was put under a general anesthetic. Was it? And how can I tell? How can I be sure? How can I be sure what it was like when I was in that state? Um, because memory is a strange thing in that it, it has inherent biases. I try to remember things in terms of the way that things take place all around me all the time. Um, memories are always pictures. I once made a video about memory being sort of a vanishing point. You're looking backwards um, from a moving vehicle as things shoot past your head onto the vanishing point. Um, and that's, in a sense, what memory is. It's a series of illustrations that have um, passed us by, but are still vivid, or at least in varying degrees, uh, vivid or vague, that eventually sort of vanish when we forget them entirely. But we, we can only remember things in terms of our present sense experience, um, or at least our present experiential capacity, because we can remember feelings and things like that. What if all of that is suspended? Not so much our memories after the fact of, of an experience are suspended, but what if our capacity to remember things is suspended temporarily using pharmacology? In other words, we can say that while the doctor put it took a chisel to my jaw to get four or five impacted teeth out, I was suspended from my capacity to experience pain, chemically speaking, I guess. Um, in fact, I didn't feel anything. I didn't experience anything, apparently. What if all that has happened is that my capacity to catalog all of that has been suspended? It's not so much that my memory has been erased, but my capacity to create a memory for the future has been suspended temporarily. That doesn't mean that I didn't have all kinds of experiences when the, um, when the anesthetic was taking effect. I may not have had any experiences that I can relate in any way at all to my present, uh, present condition because, again, I had been suspended from my experience of the physical universe, um, and I'd also been suspended from my capacity to sort of draw a map of what was going on while I was in that state, or at least a map that would be in any way intelligible when I got out. I'm not saying that this is what happened. But what I'm saying is, we've got to be careful when we say that we've figured out what unconsciousness is, what a general anesthetic will do to us, what a suppression of consciousness, or what we would call a suppression of consciousness actually is. It seems to be possible to completely suppress one's personality. Um, I mentioned sleep in the previous video, and the interesting thing about sleep is, it's One's, one's own body seems to suppress a great deal of our discriminatory faculties. 
strange things happen in our dreams, but our sense of strangeness is suppressed. If I'm flying around and uh, talking to um, a big uh, white rabbit or whatever, um, my sense that this is a strange thing to take place has been suppressed somehow by my own body. If I'm sitting here right now in front of my computer and a white rabbit walks in, I might actually get the fright of my life. But if I go over there onto the couch and lay down and fall asleep, I might have a very pleasant conversation with that white rabbit. Because something happens that suppresses the disbelief. It suppresses the, um, the, uh, the normal sort of um, groundedness that would make me question such things. So a large number of our faculties are suppressed in the normal uh, run of things by our own body when we go to sleep and we dream. What else gets suppressed? But I still emerge from sleep fully sort of backgrounded in normal reality. Um, but we do at least know that it is possible to suppress a great number of things about our minds, artificially as it were, or naturally. That does not fundamentally alter anything, or at least so it looks, when we emerge from a general anesthetic or from a very weird dream. So I think we've got to be careful when we approach this idea of unconsciousness. Just how unconscious is it? And how would we know? Thank you.